In this video we take a look at the binary search algorithm. We'll trace through the algorithm with a step-by-step -step example so you can see how it works. Take your time and pause the video when needed. Once you've mastered the algorithms in this section, take a look at SLR8 classification of algorithms, which will go over big O notation. This notation is a way of expressing the time complexity of algorithms. The time complexity of the binary search is O log n. Let's start by looking at the pseudocode for a binary search. Pause the video and work through this code carefully in your head. Make sure you understand what each line is doing. Try copying each line down as you work through the algorithm. This step is very important, don't skip it. Once you're happy with the basics of the algorithm, unpause the video. Let's work through the algorithm now using a simple set of data. Follow along, pause the video if you need to, and make sure you understand what is happening to the data set at each stage and why. So here is our original data set. As you can see, it's all sorted and in order. The item we're looking for is E. We set lower bound as the first item, that's index 0. We set upper bound as the very last item, that's index 14. We then calculate the midpoint by taking the lower bound 0 plus the upper bound 14 and dividing by 2. We end up with 7, so the midpoint is here. As the midpoint was h, and we know that h is greater than e, we now can infer that e must lie somewhere between the lower bound and the midpoint. The upper bound, therefore, now becomes the old midpoint, which was position 7, minus 1, which is 6. We now have to calculate a new midpoint. So we take the index of the lower bound, 0, the index of the new upper bound, 6, and divide by 2, and out of a new midpoint of 3. We now repeat the process. The item at the midpoint is D. D is less than E. Thus we now know that E must lie somewhere between the midpoint and the upper bound. We therefore now set the lower bound to be equal to the old midpoint of 3 plus 1, or 4. We now have to set a new midpoint, so we take the index of the lower bound 4, the index of the upper bound 6, we add them together and divide by 2, and get a midpoint of 5. We repeat the process again. The item at the midpoint is F. F is greater than E, therefore we know E must lie between the lower bound 4 and the midpoint 5. The upper bound, therefore, now becomes the midpoint minus 1 and gets set to 4. In this situation, the lower bound and the upper bound are now fixed in the same position. We can now conclude we've found the item E after 4 searches. Remember, to really master this algorithm, you should try working through it again with a different set of data and also try coding it in a programming language of your choice. Once you've achieved this, you should be able to tackle all questions relating to this algorithm in the exam.